everyone. So, um, a couple videos ago, I was talking about um, reasons why you might not want to feed your dog raw food, and I had mentioned um, doing a video about dog allergies, and I realized I hadn't yet, so tonight I'm going to do a video about dog allergies. Um, so, a lot of people actually don't know um, that their dogs have food allergies, and it causes a lot of health issues if they don't realize that this is a problem. So, um, dogs can actually be allergic to lots of things. Um, my Basset Hound is allergic to ragweed. Um, my St. Bernard is allergic to tree pollen. Uh, she's also allergic to fleas, uh, meaning that if she gets bit by a flea, she doesn't just get itchy. She will actually um, break out in hives. Some dogs are allergic to um, household cleaners. I know one dog in particular um, that I groom whose dog is allergic to uh, one dog in particular that I groom who is allergic to um, any Swiffer floor products. Uh, I know another who is allergic to Febreze. Um, if they spray Febreze on the furniture and the doctor's on the furniture, uh, she'll start sneezing and she gets itchy and whatnot. So um, allergies, just like in people, are not um, strictly food related. They can have allergies to a lot of different things. Um, one of the biggest things I think people overlook with with dog allergies is that um, your dog doesn't develop allergies like we do. Uh, if you're allergic to fish, the very first time you try fish, you will have an allergic reaction. Dogs develop allergies, especially to food, over time. So I, I hear a lot of people who say, you know, my dog has been eating this kind of food for his entire life, and he's never had a problem with it, and now he's showing all these symptoms, and we don't know what's wrong, but for some reason, they don't think of the food, um, and I think it's because people assume that, and this is a huge old wives' tale, that a dog shouldn't have its food changed because it'll get sick, and this really is a backwards way of thinking. Um, if you keep your dog on the same food all the time, your dog can actually get sick. Um, another thing that has been recently shown to cause food allergies, among others, um, is over-vaccination. A lot of people will vaccinate their dogs every year on, you know, every June, the dog goes in to get vaccinations done. And what people don't keep in mind is that, you know, if your dog is already immune to something, then it doesn't need to be immunized again because it's already immune to it. And a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, it's good to give your body, dog's body a low pressure. If your dog even comes into contact with another dog who's been vaccinated or who hasn't, their immune system is shoved into gear because your, dog, your dog's immunity, let's say your dog meets another dog who's sick, and your dog's immunity is going to say, hey, wait a second, we already know what this is. We don't have to take care of this, so they get rid of it. If your dog meets a dog who has been recently vaccinated, um, vaccines are sh like obviously when when the dog's immune system is battling this vaccine, which is essentially what they're supposed to do, they're going to shed this illness out of themselves. So if your dog meets another dog who's been recently vaccinated, it's like revaccinating your dog. Your dog's going to be like, hey, I know what this is. Let's get rid of it because we already know this. So. A lot of people will go back several times and, and every year to have their dogs revaccinated, and people don't under, people seem to think that this this is okay and it really isn't. But because your dog's immune system is constantly being compromised, you can actually trick your dog's immune system into giving up completely and saying, "Nope, I'm not doing this anymore. Let's let's get out of this way of thinking. I'm just going to shut down because I'm tired of dealing with this." Other immune systems will just freak out, and that's what an allergy is. It's an overreaction to something in the body. It's going to get in there and go, oh my god, we got to get rid of it, what do we do, what do we do? And it just goes absolutely bonkers. So, so those are really two things that I try to convey to people when they when they come in, and it sounds to me like their dog might have a food allergy. Now, and I am no way a veterinarian. I really don't say that I'm a veterinarian. I am well read, I am well educated, and I know how your dog's body works because I've done, I, I, I've taken these classes, I've, I've taken vet tech, I've taken a grooming class, well, 
like full course match. Like, I know how, like, I get it. And I know a lot of people will. Can you tell there's a cat in front of me? <laughs> I know a lot of people, you know, you're just a little girl. You don't know what you're talking about. And it's a, I just, I wish people would take it seriously because these are very serious issues that happen to your pet. I, classic case, um, I have a client of mine who has a, um, Cocker Spaniel, because we have Um, now they had a, a Cocker Spaniel before. Her name was Maggie. They rescued Maggie. And Maggie was a great dog. Never had ear infection. Never had a problem. She was a fabulous dog. Uh, they ended up putting Maggie down. She was 13. Um, she was actually going senile. And a whole other topic, because this is why people who say that, you know, pit bulls and Rottweilers turn when they get old. Any dog has the capability of going senile. It happens to all breeds of dogs, and this is actually what happened to Maggie. Um, she started biting people. She was kind of losing it. And for the safety of the family members and for herself, um, they ended up putting Maggie down, and they got Motley. Now, Motley is a great little guy. They got him from uh, somebody who specifically breeds Cocker Spaniels. I was not something they would call a breeder. Um, so they had Motley as a puppy, and they fed him the exact same thing they were feeding Maggie. Um, which is pedigree dog food. And all of a sudden, Motley started showing signs of ear infection. So they brought Motley to the vet, and sure enough, he had an ear infection. And this slowly became the pattern. Every few months, he would get another ear infection, and he'd get another ear infection. So they told her, you know, well, you know, you have a Cocker Spaniel. You should keep your ears clean. And, and she said, well, had a Cocker Spaniel for years, and we never had problems with our ears, and, you know, all dogs are different, and that's, that is a, a good point, um, so she did the good dog owner thing, and started cleaning his ears regularly, making sure that the insides of his ears, uh, were shaved clean, so that no potential bacteria was being kind of swamped in there, but it never seemed to matter how many times a day she cleaned her dog's ears, he always developed ear infections. So, when Motley was about three, let's say about three, I started grooming him. And I noticed that his ears just didn't look right. Uh, they weren't nice, they're that nice pink fleshy color. They always seemed to be red, and they always seemed to have to be, um, almost look like little bumps. Um, it's really hard, um, texture to describe, it almost looks like there was there were little waves on his ear, and it was like little bubbles, all packed in nice together, and they weren't huge, they weren't pussy, but they, they were in both of his ears, from deep inside his ear, like in his ear canal, all the way up to, I would say the outside of his ear, not into the ear flap, but onto the outside of his ear, and so I asked Dina, does, does he suffer from chronic ear infections? And she said, yes, he, he has a lot of ear infections. So, dog comes in for grooming, and as I'm grooming his feet, I notice that his toes are really goopy. And that's when the red flag started to come up. So I asked her, has Motley ever been tested for food allergies? And she, you know, was like, no, we've always been told that he had chronic ear infections. And... What was never explained to her is that if your dog is allergic to a particular ingredient in a food, the body goes into overdrive. <coughs> Daisy, she's getting mad at a kid. Daisy may. Be nice. Nobody ever explained to her that when the body goes into overdrive, other systems tend to kind of hit the backside. So the regular amount of yeast that's found on a dog's skin sometimes has the ability to kind of overflourish because there's nothing keeping that back because the, the body is too busy focusing on the immune system freaking out. So essentially what was happening happening with Motley is in these draw or these wet, moist, hot areas, like between his toes and in his ears, there was a buildup of yeast because there was nothing battling these yeast infections because the body was too busy trying to figure out what the heck was going in his mouth. So I finally convinced Dina to give it a try. Take him off the food that he was on and put him on something completely different. So 
So he went from pedigree dog food to, um, I believe he eats a can of ranch land, which is uh, duck and, and lamb, and it's also grain free. And the difference was astronomical. He hasn't had an ear infection. He hasn't had any toe goopies going on. Um, he actually recently had a flare-up because uh, she bought a different bag of dog food for him that she didn't know had grain. And um, unfortunately, he kind of went back a step. Uh, since has recovered, thank goodness. But people don't seem to realize that food allergies are very real in dogs, and they can cause a lot of problems. Dogs whose skin magically starts getting red and itchy, or starts to fall out in places that don't make sense. Um, like in the case of my St. Bernard, who was magically losing patches of fur, and we're talking almost overnight, she was ripping fur off of her. We could not figure out what was going on. Um, we've actually kind of come to the conclusion that she was likely bitten by a flea. Um, even one was all it took, because I had given her a bath the next day um, to see what was going on, and she was covered in hides. Um, and, you know, it turns out she's allergic to fleas. Um, dogs who start developing ear infections or start chewing at their toes, uh, they might actually be sensitive to something in their food, and that's why they're getting itchy. Um, dogs who are constantly sneezing or scratching their face because their nose and their throat itches. These are all signs that your dog is allergic to something. And nobody likes to live being allergic to something. So really the best thing to do, um, if you notice that your dog's skin is starting to, to look raw or his fur is just not the same as it used to, I would strongly consider looking over the ingredients of what your dog is eating and changing some of them. Um, I know that a lot of um, a lot of dog foods now actually don't have um, chicken or beef or grains in them. Um, actually, one of one of the bigger brands in the area here is the Performance Ring Ultra brand, which is um, made by uh, Pet Values Company. Um, and it actually doesn't have any chicken or beef. I believe it's turkey based. Turkey, turkey and duck, and I believe some sort of fish. I don't carry it, obviously. I'm not pet value. Um, but even then, there's there's a problem with this way of thinking because if your dog, um, a lot of this really comes down to bad breeding. Um, and as a human, I think this is a bit of a weird topic because we don't selectively breed ourselves. We love somebody, we have babies. We don't love somebody, we have babies. We don't think about genes and, and well, we both of us don't think about, you know, well, he's got allergies and I've got allergies, so maybe we shouldn't have babies because we both have allergies. Um, but breeders really sh should be thinking about these kinds of things. If they have the control over what genes go into a dog, then they should be conscious of, of what, you know, what they're breeding together. Um, that isn't to say that uh, if you know that your dogs don't do well on rice, that you avoid rice. Um, but what I'm getting at really is if your dog has severe allergies, you really shouldn't be considering breeding it with another dog. I know you don't want to tired to go with it. Because you're really just going to make puppies who genetically are predisposed to have allergies. If, if you find that your dogs are... are you know, you have a puppy. I honestly, truly suggest that you start with a run-of-the-mill, chicken-based, high-quality diet. Um, for a few reasons. A, it's easy to get a hold of, which means that if your dog develops an allergy um, to, to, you know, something like chicken, um, it's, it, well, I'm kind of doing this backwards. If you start your dog off with chicken, it could it could potentially live his entire life not being allergic to chicken, um, which is great. It's easy to get a hold of. And there's obviously the flip side, which is kind of what I was getting at. Um, if you start with something else and go to chicken, then chicken you know, an easy one. Um, chicken does tend to be an allergen, a uh, very common high allergen. Um, so starting with something else might, if, if you know that your dog's genetics predispose him to being allergic to chicken, 
So then maybe starting with something else might be a better idea uh, because change tends to be an instigator. Um, if you know that your dog um, predisposed to be allergic to grains or has skin issues, then I suggest you stay away from those kinds of things. Grains are not good for your dog anyway. So if you have, let's pick a dog breed that's susceptible to skin issues. Um, Shih Tzu's are a common one. Uh, Bichons tend to have lots of skin issues. Same thing with your hairless breed. So your um, Shola and Cleetly and your Mex or not Mexican hairless, that's obviously the same thing. Chinese Crested, there we go. Um, these breeds tend to have skin allergies and skin issues. So staying away from things that are going to compromise your dog's immune system, potentially, um, is, is a good idea. Try things like lamb and duck. Uh, lamb is, is actually becoming more of a common protein uh, than a novel one, which is a little scary, um, just because it's kind of telling people, the general public, that um, chicken is bad. And it doesn't have to be bad. I know some dogs who turns out they can actually eat chicken, and it's got nothing to do with, with the chicken itself, but the way that the food was processed. Um, there's actually a way to do allergy testing for your dog. If you aren't sure what your dog is allergic to, and you have the resources, I definitely suggest going there first, because this way, your dog doesn't have to go through the trial and error process of figuring out which pieces he's allergic to and which he isn't. I um, have a dog who comes here um, is allergic to carrots. She never would have thought carrots, but she actually she had him DNA tested, um, or not DNA tested, but he, yet she had him allergy tested, and it turns out that he is indeed allergic to carrots. Um, it's a great way to kind of skip those steps. Um, a lot of vets will actually suggest that you go on one of their allergy-specific diets, and it's not something I recommend. Um, a, they are filled with grains, which means that if your dog is allergic to grains, this isn't going to work. B, these foods are filled with medications and other things. Well, maybe not medications, but, you know, things to promote a less active immune system, which just is not a good idea. And number three, um, they're bloody expensive. Who wants to pay $105 for a bag of dog food that has a novel protein when you can go to a top quality pet store and find a grain free novel protein bag of dog food that's not only going to cost you less and might actually even have a frequent fire program, but you know, it's better for your dog. So. Um, keep these things in mind if you notice that your dog's just not acting the way it should, that it could possibly be a food allergy. And, you know, maybe it's something you might want to talk to about, to your veterinarian about the possibility of it being a food allergy and the risks involved in maybe waiting before doing all this extensive testing um, to see if it's, you know, 3,000 other problems. Um, it really depends on your dog, um, and it really depends on your veterinarian and what you decide to do. So I hope you learned something about dogs and allergies. If you have any questions, post them below. And I will see you next time.